Welcome to Electra Online. A gas, just like a solid, has a heat capacity. If we have a gas and we add heat to it, the temperature will go up. And the amount that the temperature will go up will depend upon the heat capacity of that particular gas. But unlike with solids, it depends what kind of gas you're dealing with. Are you dealing with a monatomic gas, a diatomic gas, a triatomic gas? Because the specific heat of a gas will be different depending upon what type of gas you're dealing with. And then it also depends upon how the gas is changing. Are you keeping the pressure constant? Are you keeping the volume constant? Because that does make a difference. So the simple equation that we used to use for a solid, where the change in the heat or the amount of heat applied will result in a change in the temperature depending upon the mass of the solid and the specific heat of the solid. So that equation now changes into one of two equations. It can be delta Q, the amount of heat added to the gas, equals the number of moles, times the, the specific heat if the volume is kept constant, times the change in temperature, that is in the case that we keep the volume constant, or the amount of heat required is equal to the number of moles times the heat, uh, specific heat of the uh, gas when the pressure is kept constant times the change in temperature. So you can see it depends upon whether or not you keep the volume constant or the pressure constant when you're heating the gas. And then it depends whether or not you have a monatomic, a diatomic, or a triatomic gas. So the heat capacities, and that's the, the general term that they use, depends on whether or not the volume is kept constant, the pressure is kept constant, and what type of gas you're dealing with. And it turns out, for a monatomic gas, C sub V, when the volume is kept constant, is 3 over 2 times the gas constant, which is defined over here, or when the pressure is kept constant, it requires more heat to change the temperature. It's 5 over 2 times R. If it's a diatomic molecule, it's 5 over 2 R for C sub V and 7 over 2 R for C sub P. And if it's a triatomic molecule, it's 7 over 2 R times, times R or 9 over 2 R, depending upon whether you're dealing with C sub V or C sub P. So in general, C sub P is always 1 R bigger than C sub V. So simply add 1 R to get the value of our C sub P for each of the types of molecules. Now, the change in internal energy of a gas. It turns out that that only depends on C sub V. So the change in internal energy of a gas is always equal to the number of moles times C sub V times delta T. And let's say we have a gas that starts at 25 degrees Celsius, is heated up to 100 degrees Celsius. We don't care if it's the pressure kept constant or the volume is kept constant. We only want to calculate the internal energy change of the gas. We have one mole of the gas, it's a diatomic gas, so how much of an energy change is that for the, the internal energy change for the gas? So there's the equation. All you need is the equation, then plug in the numbers and you get the answer. So at that point it's now an algebra question. All right, let's plug in the values and see what we get. So delta U is equal to one mole C sub V for a diatomic molecule. So we come over here, diatomic molecule, C sub V, it's 5 over 2 R. So it's 5 over 2 times R, and R is 8.315. And the change in the temperature from 25 to 100, that's 75. All right. So how much is that? That's 2.5 times 8.315 times 75, and that's 100 and, oh, 1,559 joules. So the change in internal energy would be 1,559 joules. And there you go. That's how you apply these simple equations, and those are the values you need to use depending upon what gas you're dealing with. And that is how it's done.